Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be having a look at some animalic fragrance notes and some fragrances that have these notes in them. Just because some of these notes come from the private parts of animals doesn't mean that I'm going to get juvenile or silly. Uh, so the, the main notes we're going to be looking at today are civet, musk and castorium. Or uh, in other words, cat's ass, deer spunk and beaver bollocks. Hello everyone, but welcome back. So I've picked four animalic fragrance notes, which I think are the main big four that people know about. And we're gonna, add, I'm gonna do a definition of them. I've been learning about them because I don't claim to be an expert, but in the process of doing this video, I found, I read up and, and hopefully I'm gonna give you a good explanation of what some of these much mentioned, but not often explained notes, what, what they are, where they come from, and perhaps what they smell like, and an example or two of fragrances that have them in. Um, and then we're gonna talk about the example fragrances and I'll just highlight the ones I've got here. So the notes I've chosen for you are are going to be musk, civet, castorium, and I've said ambergris kind of counts. It's not dirty animalic smelling, most people don't say, but it does come from a whale, so I'm putting it in to make the video a bit more interesting. So here we go with my explanation, definition, and examples. Okay, so let's kick things off with civet. So civet is a material extracted from the anal gland of the civet cat nice huh it's most likely to be synthetic civet that is used in modern perfumes but real civet is a buttery yellow paste which at full strength smells fecal and sickening many people say when diluted it has a velvety sweet and maybe even a floral scent in small amounts it gives a fragrance a sweet and exotic undertone it's also reminiscent of the chemical indole which can be found in flowers such as jasmine and has a somewhat decaying tone about it uh, vomit and honey are also sometimes mentioned when people try to describe how civet smells others mention pungent soft cheese but there is a certain sweetness about it so it's not all bad examples of fragrances with this one uh, going back a bit for a real classic fragrance and a female one uh, is Guerlain Jicky that has a lot of civet in it and I have smelled that one and I, I kind of sprayed quite a lot of that once on and I did get this kind of baby's nappies undertone to that one so maybe that was the civet also from uh, Guerlain Shalimar has a healthy dose of civet in it too in the world of men's fragrances uh, one of the big ones is Givenchy Gentleman from 1974 and Koros from Yves Saint Laurent in 1981 also has civet as a significant note so more on those two fragrances later next up then musk now musk of course one of the really common notes in fragrances uh, so musk is a class of aromatic substances commonly used as a base note in perfumery uh, they include glandular secretions from animals such as the musk deer that's what we're interested in here numerous plants emitting similar fragrances and artificial substances with similar odors so musk is a substance found within the perineal glands of the musk deer the gland that this material comes from is situated near the male musk deer's sexual organs and it's uh, thought that it emits a smell and and or chemicals that help him to attract mates. Some people say it has uh, something in common with testosterone and it's the, the idea of you know, pheromones that people produce. It's got that kind of testosterone pheromone element to it and that's why it's being used as a potentially attractive thing in perfumes. Uh, it's very useful in balancing other notes in a fragrance composition and adding a touch of warmth and sensuality. So going right back to ancient times, it's been speculated that the odour of musk acts as an aphrodisiac uh, since 1979 real musk can't be used so today we only have synthetic musk in fragrances many modern fragrances contain a, a clean what's known as a laundry musk accord so named as it can be found in many laundry detergents as well as men's and women's fragrances we're not so interested in that that's a sort of morphing of the the musk thing into a slightly cleaner uh, type of musk note but uh, we're looking at more animalic 
gnarly kind of musk notes. And a great example of a fragrance where we get a somewhat animalic musk can be found as one of the dominant notes in Kiel's original musk from 1963, which you can still buy today. Uh, that was described by one's base notes reviewer as dirty musk at its least offensive. So that's a good reference point if you want a fragrance with a really dominant musk element in it. I would say that that, that could be a great choice. Looking at the world of slightly more modern, uh, although not so much more modern, men's fragrances with a musk in them, I think that Yves Saint Laurent's Coros from 1981 is a fragrance with a hefty dose of animalic musk. Uh, it's got a similarity actually having smelled them side by side with Kiel's original musk uh, and it's very clearly detectable it's the same kind of sort of somewhat gnarly dirty musk or sexy sexual even but it smells like some kind of bodily secretion but not in a really bad way I think that they've both got that in them the fragrance also uh, Yves Saint Laurent Chorus includes civet uh, alongside an everything but the kitchen sink combination of other notes more on that one again later it's going to come in both categories musk and and civet chorus. Next up, we've got castorium. So uh, castorium is the exudate, love that word, from the castor sacs of the mature North American or European beaver. Castorium is the yellowish secretion of the castor sac, and beavers use castorium in, com in the wild in combination with urine to scent mark their territory. So it's a chemical compound that mostly comes from the beaver's castor sacs, which are located between the pelvis and the base of the tail. Uh, so, yeah, sort of the bollock area, but it's, it's not from the testicles. Uh, and because of its close proximity to the anal glands, apparently castorium is often a combination of castor Castor gland secretions, anal gland secretions, and urine. Lovely. In terms of how it smells, uh, it, it's described as a somewhat musky vanilla scent. It's also regarded as sweet, leathery, and intense. Yeah, I bet it's intense. And it is a note that tends to suggest leather. But there's this sweetness and muskiness alongside a certain animalic gnarly element to this one. Perhaps the most obvious example of a men's designer fragrance containing castorium is Antaeus from Chanel, first released in 1981. So more on that one coming up soon. So fourthly, I've uh, stretched it a bit here. We're going to include ambergris. It's uh, one of the more inoffensive but it, it notes from the world of animalics. But I think it is animalic because it comes from whale's body. So let's find out about that one. It's a wax-like substance that originates as a secretion in the intestines of the sperm whale. And it's found floating in tropical seas or maybe on the beaches. And it's used a lot in perfumes. So uh, let's find out more about ambergris. What does it smell like? Well, one website says it has an odour which is difficult to explain to anyone who's never had the pleasure of its sensual aroma. There is no denying that it is odd with its combination of sweetness and raw animal potency. For those who grow to love its exquisite yet elusive tones, the contradiction is part of this attraction. Ambergris is often described as being musky and having a sweet earthy aroma unlike any other, or a mossy fragrance reminiscent of the damp forest floor. Add a dash of ocean spray, a hint of cigar, a good amount of sweetness and a little odour of the stable floor to complete the recipe for this exotic fragrance blend. A sweet, somewhat nautical and addictive aroma. So ambergris, uh, well, one of the places that we, we get it a lot, ambergris is one of the keynotes used in many fragrances from the French niche house of Creed. We can only speculate as to whether they use real natural ambergris or a high quality synthetic substitute, but it may be that note that gives so many of their fragrances a quite hard to pinpoint fresh yet sweet, salty, aquatic undertone that a, a lot of their many in, inexpensive clones never quite capture. So a, a somewhat sweet, aquatic salty kind of fragrance mixed in with a sort of indefinable characteristic that is, is once you smell it you'll know it and you get it in the dry down on creed fragrances i think so more on some of those coming up right now okay so there was some information about these uh, really famous notes so they've been used for many many years all of these notes and uh, you know going right back to ancient times in some cases and of course you've got to remember in the old days people didn't have the same access to hygiene and washing that we now have running water all that kind of stuff so people often well they tended to smell probably a lot worse than we do now with their natural bad human bodily smells and people had to find strong smelling 
it may be animalic smells that somehow in combination with other things could could be a little bit more pleasant than human body odor uh, but but had some of that strength to actually combat the fact that people just they couldn't actually wash and clean themselves as well and had to disguise it so perhaps that's where animalic notes came in but also i think of course um, the, a lot, often they're, they're to do with glands of animals, to, some of them are to do with their mating, uh, you know, how they attract mates and that kind of stuff. So of course these kind of underlying smells, maybe there's, there are shared chemicals between uh, humans and animals that we, we maybe are attracted to sexually, subconsciously, maybe the chemical or the actual aroma itself. Without getting too into gory detail, we all know there are sexual smells that human bodies produce, which whilst not exactly nice, uh, in the right circumstances can play a part in physical attraction between people or if, particularly if they are in the throes of passion. So incorporating these smells uh, in a subtle, well, sometimes more or less subtle way into perfumes for men and women doesn't seem such an unnatural or crazy idea. So that's where it's come from. But of course, you know, when we say it smells fecal or of urine, no one wants to really smell outright of that. But these, this tiny tinge of something that maybe smells a bit that way has clearly been found to work in fragrances for many, many years. So let's have a look at my examples. The trouble here is, of course, the notes are not in your face very much in most cases, some more than others, but in some cases, if we're talking about civet, it's gonna be a supporting player, binding some of the other notes, providing a subtle twist of sensuality. So they're not gonna be civet bombs usually, or castorian bombs, although some people might say they are. You're gonna get a lot more of other notes that are obvious, and they provide this kind of sexy, subtle undertone, hopefully, in the fragrances. But it's hard to pick them out, and I don't have, in most cases, I haven't smelled the raw thing, haven't smelled any civet in my life, or castorium. I know other reviewers have done, and anyone else wants to comment on what things smell like, or better examples, please let me know. But let's, let's get into my little examples then. So the first one was Civet Givenchy Gentleman from 1974, often talked about as being a Civet bomb I've seen on a couple of review reviews in base notes. It's also really heavy in patchouli and it's got a kind of, there's lemon and bergamot in there too, there's honey, there's cinnamon and uh, there's also some vanilla and a lot of leather. So but really a really heavily uh, patchouli based scent this one and uh, Old fashioned smelling for sure. I've got a vintage bottle, there's slight differences, but they both have the civet note. There's definitely a, a, a lemony element to this one. There is a bit of sort of citrus freshness, but it's more sweet and leathery and a bit musky as well. But everyone talks about civet. So perhaps the civet in there is giving it, just playing a part alongside some of the other sweet things and giving it a little bit of that slightly saucy, I'm sexy kind of feel, but in a, in a very kind of dated, I have to say, 70s or 80s appropriate kind of way. I don't reach for this very often. My dad used to wear it actually, and uh, I enjoy it, smelling it for a historical reference. Is the civet the reason it's a bit off-putting? Probably part of it, but there's also leather and all kinds of other things. But civet, reputedly a key ingredient, holding this one together and giving it that sexy, sweet, undertone of male sensuality. So that's Givenchy Gentleman 1974. Moving on then, the next ingredient I think that I mentioned was musk. And I think vintage Koros, or modern Koros, is a real example of a musky fragrance. As I say, the other day I was smelling Kiehl's original musk, which is very clearly a musky fragrance. And there's a real similarity with that one and Koros. So Yves Saint Laurent Koros from 1981, definitely an uh, example of a musky animalic fragrance. And it's kind of a combination, as many other people have said, of clean and dirty at the same time. It's, uh, I think they, the, the company always, uh, still now, say it's something to do with um, triumphant to masculinity, this fragrance. And it has that really masculine, strong, powerful odor about it. Let's just spray a bit. But it's, it's very, very pleasant. There are a lot of pleasant notes in there. It's a very well blended, fine French perfume from Pierre Bourdon, the man who did Green Irish Tweed and some per se Aventus later on. So it's a fine French, sexy fragrance with all kinds of sweet notes. There's honey in there, there's leather, as in some of the other things. There's Artemisia, there's herbal elements. It's a very complex, rich fragrance. But underlying this and, and always pervasive throughout the life of the fragrance is this muskiness that makes it very, very sexy and masculine, but also a little bit contentious and just a little bit gnarly a little bit dirty maybe so you may or may not be man enough for vintage chorus and the women around you may or may not be able to cope with that level of masculinity perhaps 
largely because it's a, such a very musky fragrance. Also, it does have civet as a note in there as well. Again, you know, I, I can tell what I'm smelling when I, I can recognize musk. Civet, not so much, but if anyone wants to help me out with these uh, notes, please feel free to comment below. Next up then, uh, what was it? Uh, so, of course, Castorium. Castorium from the Beavers Nether regions. Uh, what a wonderful, Who? how did they find that out? I, that, that was a good thing to use, I, I dread to think. But anyway, Antaeus from 1981 is always talked about as the Castorium bomb, and I've sprayed some somewhere. This will be a good test because I haven't written on my bits of paper, but I'll be able to recognize it. Yep, that's your Castor, uh, your, your uh, Antaeus. I love Antaeus. For me, out of the three that I've mentioned so far, this is the most wearable. Uh, this is a modern, or well, reasonably modern example. I don't think the spray is that color anymore, so it's maybe a bit vintage, but not very. 2000 and something. It, this one has lime and bergamot, bergamot in the opening. A little bit of citrus freshness in the opening. It's not really a citrus fragrance. I wrote some other stuff. Uh, of course, Chanel, Chanel's favorite uh, famous jasmine is in there. Thyme, rose, basil. So lots of herbaceous elements. I think this is a more refined, elegant fragrance perhaps than, than the others so far to, to me. Uh, very, very nice. A dark sweetness is in there for me as well and a nice leathery element. And of course, castorium is supposed to smell a bit leathery and perhaps enhance the than other if it has a, other notes giving a leathery feel castorium would enhance that and give it this underlying raw masculinity i don't get anything gnarly or dirty in this one some people compare it a lot more to chorus than i think i get i don't think this one smells very dirty or animalic in any way but i do think it smells very masculine and perhaps the castorium is something to do with that but again not being familiar with that fragrance note in and of itself all i can say is i do get a leatheriness and a, a certain depth and masculine intensity about that fragrance and perhaps the castorium is playing a big part in that um, last but not least then we did i, I did mention ambergris because I wanted to just uh, make it a bit more interesting and, and have a more crowd pleasing animalic note so if we agree that that's animalic a good example would be any fragrance almost from the house of creed I've gone with green Irish tweed lovely green grassy fresh fragrance with citrus lemon verbena and sandalwood in there but ambergris is also in the base it's a fixative as are, I think most of these they help things last longer and grab all the other smells and make them stronger and make them last longer and the ambergris plays that role particularly we get it in the dry down of creed fragrances that if you leave them on your clothes and smell them the next day i really love the quality of something magical in there that that je ne sais quoi that x factor that i think perhaps all these notes provide and it's a kind of maybe the nautical sweet almost salty sea air element that i do think you also get with green irish tweed as as well as many of their other fragrances aventus millicene imperial that maybe just makes them that one stand apart from some of its cheaper clones many of which are quite like i've got estriara stag black um, and uh, rag bar for man. I've even got a sample there of train wheat. They all smell almost the same and quite good copies. Just missing some of the citrus brilliance and maybe in the base they don't have access to that high quality ambergris note, be it synthetic or natural, whatever creed you use, or they can't afford to use it. And it just means that they lack some of that certain nautical sea air je ne sais quoi that green Irish tweed and so many other creed fragrances have. So there was my attempt to talk about and discuss with you some animalic fragrance notes. No huge expert myself, and in many cases, I wouldn't know what that note all on its own smells like because I haven't been near a beaver's backside recently. But if you have, or if you know more about these fragrance notes than me, please let us know and give us some other examples of civet fragrances, musk, or whatever in the comments below. So that was it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. As ever, whatever we're doing in life, let's project, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.